The house was ablaze as I departed. I set off into the deepest crevices of the abyss, leaving all behind. Not knowing what I was to find, I took the plunge straight into the darkness. And what lay there, deep at its heart, shook me to my core. I may have abandoned all my fears, but they have not forgotten me. Well, that is it for now, folks. But make sure you stay tuned because we'll be taking your sound request and...
ocean and boundless darkness. Yes, yes, and in the ocean you found? A tape of the little girl in the attic. Great. And when you reached the attic and set everything up, like in the video, what happened? She refused to be brought back. And that concludes our interview. Class D subordinate. Drop off the items you acquired during testing into the duffel bag next to the exit doors. You may carry on with testing after that. Where are the exit doors? Behind you, in the corner of the hangar. Big red doors. Red light shining above them. Just go on. Site coordinator out. And remember, there is no replication division.
Annie? Annie? You with me? Mm -hmm. Come on. Up on your feet. You're no good to anyone down there. I told them to cool it with the amnestics, but they just love taking advice from security. Let's get you to your office. That feeling in your gut? Like you're gonna vomit your insides out? That is, uh, normal. And you've been through this more times than I care to count. Right now, you need to ground yourself. And there's something in your office that'll help you do just that. We call them Pathfinders. Personal items that you and only you know the full story of. They'll help you find your bearings. Check them out inside, and everything about this place will start coming back to you real soon. It ain't all happy memories in there, but that's just life, I guess. I'll be waiting here once you're done. See you when you get back. And, uh, almost forgot. I'm John. Hopefully you'll figure that out for yourself soon. After Dad left, I did some things I don't like to think about too much. Got into some real trouble real quick. And when they offered to help, I didn't see any other way of going about it. They've been redacting my reports on the house for some reason. yourself. This is the best part. <laughs> the first movie I ever saw in the cinema with Dad. The abduction scene made me spill my soda all over him, but he couldn't stop laughing. A keepsake from Mom. She died before I got the chance to meet her. Dearest Annie, there are things that have been eating away at me for years. I have to try and make it right for both of you. I hope that it's not too late. I will come back to you and make sense of it all. Keep the light on until I get back. I'm the note came with this inside. Thanks for the jewels, Dad. Really made you leaving feel like a breeze. Regional Science Fair. The thing that won it was my homemade portable radio tower. Sleep was a no-show for weeks leading up to it. It was a Monday. I remember because Dad split the next Thursday. Didn't get much sleep after that, either. standard procedure to ask you a couple of personal questions, just to make sure you're all there. I don't mean to pry, but protocol means I'm obliged to. Ready? I'm ready. What did your mother leave behind for you? A locket. What won you the science fair competition? A portable radio tap. Right. And the last one. Why were you conscripted by the Replication Division? To avoid jail time? It is my privilege to conclude that you are of sound body and mind. Welcome back, Annie. Thanks for the warm welcome. Good to be back, I guess. 
Where is everyone anyway? There was a little mishap while you were in the house. Frank blew out of here and took a few dozen blocks of concrete with him as well. You don't say. Yes, ma'am. And as a little bonus for us, code red lockdown. Everyone was evacuated on the spot. Well, everyone except the three of us and a particular pain in the ass. Someone has to stay behind so we can have subordinates to fuck. Attention! All personnel gather up. Speak of the devil. Well, if it isn't our very own D-Class 3546 back to her former glory. Considering we're under code red lockdown, protocols are paramount. We've had enough of an eventful evening with someone deciding SCP-R-6448 deserved a night on the town. There will be no more mistakes tonight. Your little skeleton crew of three is the only personnel remaining on site as per emergency protocol. With that in mind, D-Class 3546, I believe you have a mandatory weapons and safety rebrief to attend. Run along now. Mustn't keep your colleagues waiting. Jesus. Good evening. My name is... Do I really need to do this? She knows what my freaking name is. Safety protocols and regulations are to be followed to the letter! Good evening. My name is Ray, and I will be performing the mandatory weapons and safety rebrief as prescribed by the SCP Replication Division's safety and regulatory protocol. I will now commence with the rebrief. Wonderful. Now get to it! He always stops listening at this point. Yada yada yada, don't blow your brains out with a firearm. Kinda obvious, but hey. Don't mistake SCP-2950 for SCP-396, no duh. And I think we're done. Congratulations, you are now officially rebriefed, weapons and safety wise. I can't believe just how much safer I feel already. Good, and for that, you get a cookie, in the form of this beautiful level 1 key card that'll get you into replica testing. I'd say don't spend it all in one place, but that's kind of the point. Oh, that's my cue. With everyone evacuated, guess I'm the designated power generator fixer. See you around. You have your next assignment for the night. A festering nuisance, but an assignment nonetheless. SCP-R-1974 awaits in the replication testing area. You'll be testing for speech patterns, syntax, and personality disorders. Seemingly a simple task, but one that takes a heavy mental toll. Make sure to forward all my animosities. Director out. Great job with testing us. Some incredible testing right there. It's moments like this I regret not having hands to clap with. Is this the good tub bathtub routine? My bunkmate is even more on edge than usual due to tonight's events. 
Frank's a pant escape rattled everyone's cages, so to speak. Who you calling a bunk mate? I am the bunk, you lousy bastard. Besides, if anything, Frank busting out of here has lifted my spirits. Although if I hear that prick saying how we're under cold red lockdown one more time, I'll run a cyanide bath myself. Please, for both of our sakes, tone down your feelings towards the site coordinator and curb your illicit activities. You know what? Seeing as it's already been an eventful night, maybe we ought to spice it up a bit more. Listen well. The uh, coordinator spends more time thinking about you than you realize. And I mean, a lot. See, if, if I were you, I'd think real good and hard about visiting his office on the upper floors. What's going on here? I just figured you might want to find out why Pops took off all those years ago. What do you know about my father? I don't know nothing, but I can promise you that he does. Even if I wanted to check out his office, which I'm not saying I do, you and I both know that it's impossible to get in there because he's holed up inside it 24-7. I've got three words for you. Code, Crimson, Lockdown. Two outbreaks on a single night, that wouldn't look good for a little old psych coordinator. I go as far to say he'd be forced to leave the premises immediately. As for safety and regulations, because the precious coordinator has to be protected at all cost. And that would mean his office would be free for anyone to indulge their curiosity. Go to the meeting room, take it from there, and see where it leads you. What the hell? Well, that's our peaceful retirement going down the drain. If you need help, I ain't going nowhere. I know, uh, you might not like everything you find up there, but you gotta face the music. Oh, you're done with that... thing. Ugh. Both condolences and congratulations are in order. I'd say I hope it wasn't too much of a nuisance, but that's unlikely. Ah, well, go do whatever it is you do around here until you clock out. Some of us don't have the luxury that comes with a lack of responsibility.
on bucket duty tonight. Fun times. <laughs> What's up? I can tell something's on your mind. Just, uh, thinking about some old friends of mine. John has friends on the outside? Wait here until I go and share that bombshell with Ray. They're... not around any- Oh, I'm... I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to pry. That's fine. Been a while since they passed. Buddies of mine. From back when I was part of the MTF. Before I got demoted down here. What do you mean? We were... part of an op. Gone south. An op that shouldn't have been given a green light in the first place. But hey, the monster was contained. What have we got to complain about? What happened? What well, was a calculated risk on their part, as they like to put it? What they didn't calculate was me being the only survivor. <laughs> My suits never were ones for listening. They'd rather tell tales about all the SCPs they've contained. But what you'll never find in those files is even a mention of all the lives laid down to secure those SCPs in the first place. I suppose that's just part of the job. Anyway, I wouldn't stop giving them hell. So they sent me on my merry way down here as a token of appreciation. Do you miss them? Your friends? Not a minute goes by where I wouldn't trade places with any one of them. I've said too much. It's, um, not exactly something I like to talk about. But me not talking about it ain't gonna fix what they did. And getting back at them would? It'd make things a little easier. That's for sure. Hopefully I'll have something to offer by the time this night's through. You do that. Safety protocols mandate a roll call every hour on the dot. Sound off if you're doing good. And this is me sounding off. You know, I was a gunner, not a shrink in the tech team. You sure you're okay? Yeah. Just... Still in there, how come time is affecting her differently? Yes, 
Yes! The temporal polyvalence is why. Brilliant. <laughs> You're brilliant! Why do we have to stay behind and guard this asshole? Who's gonna come for him? The bathtub? Watch it. They might hear you. Commencing conscription interview with candidate 3546. Well, Annie, looks like you found yourself in a bit of a pickle. My, my, I have to say, looking at you, I never think you had all this felony in you. Then why don't you look the fuck away? <laughs> Aren't you a peach? Luckily for you, I belong to an organization that can make all of this go away. You could walk out that door and put all this behind you like a bad dream. Look, mister, I've been on the streets for a while now, and I've yet to see anything being up for grabs without something being asked in return. So why don't you level with me and spare me the bullshit? Very well. We could use someone with your particular skills. Meaning what? Oh, I'm afraid I can't disclose our due diligence. But rest assured. We've been particularly diligent when it comes to you. What's the catch? No catch. Well, maybe a small one. There is a certain medication you would be required to take. I'm instructed to tell you that it could alter your memory, but just between us, I can assure you that it will. Allow me to leave you with this. When opportunity comes knocking,
out the ingredients to make a catastrophe. You should talk to the bathtub. I have everything I need to trigger the bucket, but I can't get to it. It's locked off behind level 5 clearance. Aren't you buddies with that security guard? I reckon he's got level 5 clearance. He has a chip on his shoulder too, so you should try asking him to join the cause. After all, if there ever was a night for trying your luck, it's this one. I'll see what I can do. I need to talk. Sure. What can I do you for? We're friends, right? Where I come from? It's not a good sign when you need to ask somebody that. What I meant was, if I said I needed you to help me out, would you? I don't scare easily, but this would make a mighty fine red flag if I did. What's going on, Annie? I need to break into the site coordinator's office. And why is that, exactly? I don't even know where to start, really. That makes two of us, D-Class. But I'm waiting for a bone here. And I can wait a long time. I'm... sorry. There are things from my life I can't really talk about. Things I don't know how to talk about. As a walk-in checklist of your Pathfinder protocol, I can see where you're coming from. But what I don't see is how breaking into our supervisor's office has anything to do with that. You're gonna laugh and think it's stupid. Kid, we're ten feet of steel away from Keter. I'm pretty sure I can handle it. The bathtub told me that the coordinator has some sort of fixation with me and my life. And that he should have some kind of information on me in his office. What kind of information? That's what I need to find out. Alright. I'll bite. There's also... something else. I'm listening. It's not just the amnestics that have been wearing me out lately. I keep having these flashbacks. Flashbacks? Of what? I'm not sure. But I think it's that house I keep testing. Only it's... It's different, somehow. Like it's from some time long ago. I can't explain it, but I know it ties into all this. Testing that same house over and over with the same outcome? Now just tell me one more thing. What do you hope to find up there? What happened to my father? It's good enough for me. <sighs> You're level 5 clearance. We need to go and wake someone up. Uh, level five. Wait a minute, you, you... The bucket. Are you fucking insane? How convenient you forget to mention the meanest SCP in the building being a part of this operation up until now. We need to trigger a Code Crimson lockdown in order for the coordinator to leave his office. You know the protocol. And I don't know of any other lockdown-inducing material lying around. Do you? <sighs> Fuck it. Let's give it to him. I'll unlock the door. Um... Now might be a good time to wrap up that will and testament, if you haven't already. Deal. And thank you. Don't thank me until we're in the clear. would have been necessary in the first place if you just... Oh, look who's awake. Care to join in on the fun of stitching up your friend who almost died? Ray, please, not now. Oh, not now? You don't feel like it, huh? Sorry to inconvenience you. Do you have any idea what could have happened? To John? To me? No time for that, right? 
Better just roll the dice and hope for the best. He'll make it, by the way. Not that you give a flying fuck. And all this for what? Just to mess with them? Or have you decided to exercise your demons in the most fucked up way imaginable? Don't you have anything to say to me? I can't. But of course you can't. This is not what I meant when I said you should take control for a change. Why don't you get off my fucking back for a change? <sighs> you know what? Whatever. Go finish that thing off yourself and do whatever it is you need to because I don't want to look at you right now. I killed it.
Reuters Journal 2473. Testing on our primary objective, designated number SCP-R-9237, also known as the House, carries on, but to no avail. The replica and its tester, subordinate 3546, have not yet forged a link potent enough to bridge the gap between realities on a stable basis. Subordinate 3546 is, as of yet, unaware of her link to both the house and the events that transpired within. She is, however, beginning to demonstrate temporal reflexive memory relapse. This was expected, given her familial connection to the location. Luckily, she cannot form coherent memories as of yet. The amnestics are, at this point, still successful enough in their suppression, but it's only a matter of time before her recollection breaks through. Meanwhile, our attempts at retrieving the original house are unsuccessful, and, on a personal note, are becoming increasingly frustrating. Subordinate 3546's father was able to cross the threshold and enter the house but his method of ingress remains unclear. It's obvious the house needs to be recorded with the handheld camera from the radio tower, but the combination of steps needed to transfer the house into our reality continues to elude us. It is becoming apparent that D-Class 3546 will have to be involved directly at the location. However, this is a last resort, which implies relinquishing our control of the situation. I am determined to avoid such drastic measures for as long as possible. Case log ended. I know this place. Hello, Annie. I find it odd recording something for a future you. Although you're still inside, I feel like you're right here with me and have been forever. Already you've taught me more than you'll ever know. My sweet baby girl, you have no idea just how special you are but i do and that's all Where that matters you? you've been gone for I'm an hour recording this now so you I'm... is it that I'm hard here. to set the dial i know where i need to go please just dimwit? help me get out of I here now i can literally see oh. the house through okay. the camera we'll do what it's we can right on our end there meet us in front of the elevator Why and replication testing we'll lift the lockdown from inside the security room Did you find what you were looking for? I can't talk about it. And I've gotten used to that. It's things from my past, right? My family. I can't talk about it because I haven't made sense of it for myself yet. But this place, the house, the little girl, they chose me for a reason. A reason they've decided to keep from me for as long as I can remember. I've had this feeling. Like there's this piece of me that was ripped out somehow. And no matter what I did, where I'd go, I could never shake it off. I can't explain it. But I just know, I know, that this will help me put it back together. And I know I haven't earned the right to ask for your trust. So... 
What comes next? I've got no idea. But if there's a chance my father has anything to do with this, I have to try and find him. It's a leap of faith. Sometimes you need to take it to see what will still be there once you climb back up. And will there be someone there? I'm thinking about it. It's probably not the time or place, but I know you read that letter in my office. If you're gonna go snooping around, you might- It's fine. It was meant for you anyway. Not the way I wanted for you to read it, but it's that kind of night. Nothing goes to plan. Do you take any of it back now? I meant every word I wrote. I managed to wipe the security footage. You've got enough of a head start before they even notice you're gone. As far as they're concerned, none of us were involved. But I don't think they'll be too concerned with the skeleton crew that was left behind anyway. I guess this is it, huh? I guess so. Then a parting gift is in order. Consider this the final step of your safety rebrief. And uh, wherever you're headed, you're not going to get far on those bony legs of yours. Take the car instead. Thank you. For all of it. It means everything to me. We'll figure it all out then. Just come back in one piece first. I will. Give him hell, Annie. But we're going national, baby. All right, it's time to get serious for a moment, folks. Wherever you're tuning in from, we hope you're safe. First and foremost, a region-wide evacuation is still underway due to severe landslides. But you're in good hands, everybody, okay? Trust the experts, and we'll all pull through. Things are looking grim, so let's turn to that one thing that always dispels the blues. Music. Well, unless you play some blues, that is. <laughs> the lines are now open, and we're live for your musical tastes. Hello, caller, you there? Yeah, tell us your name and your request. Yes, hello, uh, this is uh, me, Bill, here from around the corner. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, landslides, is that the best they could come up with? Come on! <laughs> we know what they're doing up in them warehouses, and it ain't no landslides, buddy Row. Mm -hmm. All right, sir, uh, please... You know, for the third time, this is the segment of the show where we take some request and that's it. Oh, why didn't you say so? Request time. Well, how about you play the song, The Government Screws Us Over? You got that one? <laughs> it's a humdinger, pal. Could you please just, uh, get them off the air now? Hey, they will not evacuate. We seem to be having technical difficulties. Sorry about that, but it looks like the lines are open again. Hello, caller. We're ready for your name and request.
You done, Frank? <coughs> oh, shucks, Annie. I had to make sure it was you. Only weirdos left roaming these roads tonight. <laughs> Just yanking your chain, buddy. That is. No more chains for you anymore. The great outdoors look good on you. Is it all you ever dreamt of? Are you kidding me? <laughs> you people get to walk anywhere you want. Eat whatever you want. Stalk whomever you want to. This is the life. Enjoy it. It'll last. They had no right keeping you locked up in there. Yeah, there wouldn't be anything to enjoy if it weren't for you. I have no idea what you're referring to, my dear. So that's the game we're playing? <laughs> hey, uh, what are you doing here anyway? I, I doubt they introduced driving brakes in the six hours I've been away. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, tell me they didn't figure out you were in cahoots with, the, with me. They figured it out. Consider me excommunicated. Annie, no! Oh, I'm, I, I'm so terribly sorry. Oh, I can't believe it. Those, those rats! Don't think twice about it. I had an axe to grind there, too. Helping out not tears in a bind was just a bonus. All right, all right, if you say so, okay? Listen, you're better off without that place anyway. Heck, I I'd say I, I practically did you a favor. <laughs> so, what's next for you, kiddo? I'm heading out to find my father, who's been missing for years. Whoa, that sounds heavy. Yeah, families are tough, from what I've heard, at least. Can't say I've had the chance to experience it firsthand from inside a cage. I'm well, seeing as I owe you more than one, it's high time I return the courtesy. Call me superstitious, but my antlers have been buzzing non-stop for the past hour. I don't speak not, dear. What does that mean? Trouble on the way. I figure the hills are already crawling with MTF. Only now they've got two reasons to be out and about. If those replication division goons come knocking, you'll want my help. And if it's anything else? Then you'll need it. You just take care of yourself out there. Don't go getting caught in some headlights now. Now that you're free, it can't happen, you know? Oh, ha ha ha. Make fun of the deer, why don't you? Happy for you, buddy. <laughs> Until we meet again, my friend. Always a pleasure, Frank. and your seatbelts even tighter because it's time to get your spooks on. That's right, a brand new edition of Tales from the Nether is coming right up. Take it away. I was but a young man when I set forth on this perilous path. The horrors that were unveiled before my eyes have furrowed my face and carved my mind. Now, I have become the path that I set upon a lifetime ago. Garagoth. That is its name. Garagoth. I ventured on this quest to slay the beast. My thirst for glory would be quenched by its blood. My unyielding hunger for power would be vanquished upon feasting on its flesh. And that incessant clamor in the back of my mind, which has followed me throughout my days, would be reduced to a whisper. And now, the beast was finally within my reach. As I drew ever closer to its lair, the distant echo of warnings from weary travelers and warriors alike rose to a scream. A rancid stench of death lingers amongst the sycamore. Severed heads hang from branches like fruit of decay. Festering limbs cover the ground beneath me, filling the air with dread and malice. Unwaveringly, I carry on with but one. You have got to be kidding me. Hands on the wheel, head into position. Eyes in front of you at all times.
License and registration, please. please. Uh, could you give me another minute? I'm afraid I can't do that, madam. I'm going to have to ask you again, nicely. Please hand over your license and registration. Up yours, pig! My, my. Such wanton insubordination. I realize you are under considerable amounts of stress at the moment. But I'd like to state that I am calmly approaching this situation. I'll give you some duress if you keep this up. No, don't. Well, if that is the case, I can only deduce that this opposition in the face of authority stems from a character forged in a lonely and meager existence. And you are all alone. Are you not, Annie? I know all about you. Our rendezvous has been in the cards for a long time. Each turn you took has led you to this exact point at this exact time. Fate collides with your resolve. You would love nothing more than to reach for that gun Ray was kind enough to provide you with. If only you could use it to unleash all that anger that's been brewing inside of you. But what is anger, if not an extension of guilt, guilt that's been clawing at your throat ever since the day you were born? Tell me, Annie, how does it feel? To have killed your own mother. She died giving birth to you just so you could squander your life away, didn't she? Do you think she'd do the same now, knowing what an immeasurable screw-up you turned out to be? I'm trying the best I can. Fuck off! And your poor, poor father. Having to stomach the sight of you every day after you butchered the love of his life? You cling to daddy in your image of him, but know that he abandoned you for being the abominable disgrace you are. Daddy. Daddy. I'm sorry. Oh, at least you have your friends, right? You know, the two basement rats, both of whom you used tonight to facilitate this little road trip of yours. But that seems like a pattern of yours. You suck, and you suck the life out of anyone crazy enough to come close to you until you get enough to keep you going. I deserve to suffer. Here's the truth, Annie. No one wants you on this earth. And your excursion this night is merely the final nail in the coffin that... Feel the bell of the gun. Feel just how short it is. All it takes is for a single bullet to cross that distance. And then all your worries with it. Come on now. Take the leap. Embrace it.
crushing blow. A lifetime of struggle and unbearable torment ended with one precise and final strike. Garagoth's lifeless vessel now lay before my feet. There would be no death, no malice, nor misery, for the beast was no more. The blood on my battered face was still fresh when the screams came. The horrible shrieks of the men and women, the anguished cries of their children were no longer silenced by the beast's presence in my mind. Garagoth was no more, and I was awakened to my wretchedness. My body is broken, but it is a paragon of strength next to my shattered mind. Sleep. I need to sleep for millennia. If there are heavens above us, may they grant me rest. Whatever flame I was trying to extinguish when I set off on this journey, it has since spread to the rest of my soul like wildfire. Dark, shapeless void is now left in its stead. Both my body and my mind yearn for the respite that only eternal slumber can bring. I look to the cliffs in the distance and make my way towards them. Standing on the cliff's edge, I gaze at the horizon one last time. I close my eyes and silence. What seems like ages of it. But this eternity of desolation is ended by an image. Keep the light on till I get back. Hi, Annie. I'm recording this message, although I hope that you never hear it. Because if you're listening, it means that you've become a part of all this by your own will or someone else's. No matter how you got here, just know that there are things I tried to protect you from. Our family house lies hidden in front of you, even though I could never see it as our home. There was too much pain for us inside. That's why I tried to escape. But there was always something calling me back. Someone. I hoped it would just fade from my memory, but it would seem that only the house itself can fade away. That camera is the only thing that can bring it back for some reason. But the camera alone is not enough. The materials you found here will help you with the rest. I realize now that it wasn't my place to shelter you from it all. I hope that one day you'll understand the lengths a parent will go to. To protect what is most precious. That's why I've returned here. I don't know what lies before me, but what I do know is this. If you're listening... It means that I didn't get to tell you this myself. So, if you're going in, and at this point it seems like you are, make sure to get out of there as soon as you can. It looks like I couldn't. Love, Dad.
light won't it go through?
<laughs> I remember this. Jimmy? No. Timmy. Timmy. You there? Oh, come on. Don't be like that. I know I haven't been around for a while, and I'm really sorry. But right now, I need your help. You're right. That wasn't cool. I promised that I couldn't find my way back to you. Back home. But I'm here now. Maybe if you give me the emblem, I can take you with me far away from here. Sweet baby girl, you have no idea just how special you are. But I do. And that's all that matters. I am recording this now so you can hear it for yourself. Once you're ready. Once you're all grown up. Sadly, I won't be there to see it with my own eyes. But some of us are called to make sacrifices in order for others to prosper. We are at the heart of the spiral, where worlds collide. Our guiding hand will lead to the center. By now, you will have seen many of the wonders this world has to offer. However, there are some miracles that are hidden from us. Taken from us. I am part of a group that seeks to undo this injustice. An injustice committed by an organization called the SCP Foundation. They gave themselves the right to lock up anything and anyone unfitting of their so-called natural order. These extraordinary and majestic beings are jailed and given numbers like branded cattle before they are trapped forever and butchered. I may not have been here to see you grow, but you are of my blood, and I know that you'll feel this injustice in every bone of your body. But we're going to change all that. You are going to change that because my baby girl you are the key to the gate standing in the way of progress it's time that humanity was ushered into a new era an era of wonders and i have come into possession of a gift that will enable us to do so merry christmas to you <laughs> what you didn't actually but where did you can, can we afford it you just focus on turning it on first. Oh, right. Um, let me just, uh... Hi! <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, I think I'm gonna need to show you how to work that. Radio dishes are a whole different animal, sweetie. This... this is uncharted territory. How do you plan on recording Annie when she, um, arrives if you don't know how to use it? Oh, so that's what it's for. It's here for all the good ahead of us. But she comes first. That she does. Merry Christmas, baby. <laughs>
Mel? Mel? Melissa? Melissa? Oh no! No! You came back for her. Don't worry, sweetie. I'm... I'm fine. Walls. Walls around me.
gonna let me through? Pay the toll first. <laughs> You can't do it by yourself. Come home, Annie. To free him, let's take a walk between worlds.
had him almost there. Dad! Save your strength. It's gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. She's here. We're all together now. You... You're all grown up. Look at you. Just like your mother. Please... Forgive me. No, no. You did what you had to do for me. For us. I... Let it take me from you, but you don't need to suffer for our mistakes. You don't need to suffer. Dad. Dad. What do I do? What do I do?